Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about the importance of code reviews. Okay, so I've mentioned this before, but I do not always code everything myself. I do some coding myself, especially if it seems like it's gonna be a fun project, but otherwise, if we get a client that comes in and wants an app done, we'll outsource it. So I have several partner companies that I work with. I've had several partner companies that I will never work with again, but some of them I trust, and I'm like, okay, cool, we'll, we'll go with them, right? So my job in a lot of, on a lot of our projects is just to make sure that our client gets the best app possible. So make sure that the code is high quality, make sure that everything is bug free, make sure everything goes, goes through to them because they don't know enough to check it themselves. So a lot of what I do is code reviews, right? If you've ever worked in a software team with other developers, you may have had code reviews before. So you had a senior developer just check over the code and make sure that you're following the standards. And ideally, you have documented standards. So you have like a, a coding standards document for whatever language it is. And we need to do one for Flutter. That's one of the ones that, that we need to do at the moment. So you have a coding standards document and you make sure everything's done according to it. So that's a lot of what I do. And sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's difficult. It's difficult if you're working with somebody who's never done code sta coding standards before. I've never had anybody look over their code. They're, they're used to just being a, a sole developer and they're working on what they're working on because a lot of the time it's the heart and soul that goes into the code and they just a little bit of criticism, they get very defensive about it. So I'll say something like, uh, you know, could you just rename these variables to something else here? Or you, you've got a lot of code here. I think this could be, you know, this, this block of code keeps repeating. This should be a function or a widget or something else right just standard stuff that you get from years of experience but when you explain that to a junior developer their their whole thing is but it's working but everything's working i don't know why you want to change it why do you want to change it if it's working and the reason is it's not maintainable now early on when i started getting other people to do my apps for me i would just they would send me compiled apks or compiled ipas and i was like I was fine with that. Like I would say, can I see the code? And they were like, well, you can't see the code until you until you paid for it. So, okay, well, so I look at the APK, I'd make the final payment, I'd get the code and I think, oh my God, it looked like an explosion. Like variables were named all kinds of things, like a lot of copy pasting blocks of code. Things just didn't quite make sense and it was not maintainable, right? If I wanted to make any change to it, it was almost, it was so spaghetti code. It was you know, global variables everywhere. I mean, the kind of stuff that junior developers do, like if it depends on who they gave it to. So that kind of stuff is, is terrible. So if you ever hire somebody, you have to, and if you know the code and you know the standards you wanna do, you have to have that, that early check just to make sure everything is done early on. Now, one of the things that we put in our developer contract is that we have to have visibility in the code. I need to have visibility in the code, right? It needs to be checked in on a regular basis when I ask for it. So a lot of the times I'll be like, I need you to check in the code and they'll say, ooh, yeah, we need to wait till you paid for it because, uh, you know, I'm like, dude, I paid, I paid for a large chunk of it already and it's in the developer contract. So it's something that I insist on, but it's not, it's not always an easy conversation. When I was a junior developer and I had somebody looking over my code, like a more senior developer, when he started to criticize it, and he wasn't mean about it, it wasn't like saying, Eric, you stupid moron, why did you do this? And it was, it was all spaghetti code, especially as a junior developer. Every, like in retrospect, dude, it, you know, he, he was going easy on me. But so you go in through, and because I spent so many hours plugging away at it, rerunning it, rerunning it, rerunning it, getting it working, and some things were just, I knew they weren't elegant, but they were working. And when he came to criticize it, then I kind of just, it was not good. So it's always difficult to do it, but it's super, super important. The reason I'm bringing this up is because if you do hire other developers, whether it's to work, like you're a developer and it's somebody to work in your team or, um, or you're hiring developers to do your app for you, make sure you have visibility into the app. Make sure you put that in the initial agreement in the contract to say, okay, even, even if it's fixed price, I need you to do regular check-ins so I can check it. Even if you don't know how to read the code, even if it's a language you don't understand, you're in a position where you get somebody else to have a look at it and check over the code because what you don't want to do is get to the end of the project and you have something that is completely unmaintainable. You take it to somebody else for a um, for like an enhancement or like a, a, a little addition to it and they go, dude, we got to rewrite it because that nobody wants to hear that. So. 
Anyway, let me know what you guys think. If, if you're a software developer, do you guys work with uh, code reviews? Do you, do you do code reviews in a team? Or do you, are you just a, a lone developer and you're, you prefer to be that way? So, because I totally get that too. Anyway, that is it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.